This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Med Canadian Barbecue Company. Med Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Med Canadian will be at the Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday from 4 to 7 p.m. and at the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery from 11 to 6 p.m. this Sunday. Again, the Sunday Finley Crafted Nano Brewery, 11 to 6. Be sure to check out his social medias, Facebook and Twitter for more information about him and his food truck. Matt Kenny Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by, wait for it, wait for it, the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch roast to order veteran owned coffee company. Every single batch is hand roasted and not a moment before you order it ensuring you get the freshest roasted beans possible because when your company is based on integrity which you know it's ohio people and marine family of course they're doing everything with integrity both to you and back to the farmers in both directions they're doing everything with integrity ensuring you get the freshest most premium coffee beans you can but also beans that are morally attained and morally purchased they are organic and fair trade certified. You can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? Um, we have a special guest, I guess, for this episode. What do you think? Okay. We got some barbecue, got some coffee in the uh, in the chat here. We're we're off to a good start here, Jared. So let's and some let's go ahead and get the show. Let's go ahead and get the show on the road here. And and some dogs. What what else could you want? You have football. You got coffee. You have you have barbecue and you have dogs. What else could you want? Maybe some beer. We'll work on that sponsor. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well over here. How are you today, Jared? I'm trying to get the dog not wrapped up in my headphone cable. That that is what I'm. That is how I am currently doing. All right. Well, while you're doing that, let me go ahead yeah. and uh, start us off here. So, no Buckeye football this weekend. So for today's episode, we're going to look at some recruiting news here it's been a while since we've done some recruiting updates so we thought this would be a perfect opportunity to get some just get everybody caught up on recruiting news some potential commitments potentially coming up and even a mock class here and that's right we're doing class. a mock class that's right we're doing a mock class it's been a while it's been a while. I've actually been share. I actually do a mock class every month and I just share it with the folks in the discord, but we're actually doing an episode around it. And uh, Kyle, just because Ohio State isn't playing anyone this weekend, that doesn't mean that this isn't still a know your enemy episode, because as we all know, it's Ohio versus the world. Yeah, indeed it is. Indeed it is, Jared. So let's go ahead and start off here. Where do you want to start? Where do you want to start today? Um, do, should, should we just start with the mock class? Sure, sure. Let's let's pull that up here, Jared. All right, all right, all right. So, first off, let's just let's do the easy part. Let's do the easy part. There are currently fourteen members of the class: uh, cornerback Terrence Brooks, cornerback Jair Brown, cornerback slash nickelback slash defensive back Ryan Turner, linebackers C.J. Hicks and Gabe Powers. I will note, however, Gabe Powers could be moving down to a defensive end position. That's a possibility, but um, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, no one's position's ever set in stone, of course. Um, Hegra Chabola at offensive tackle. Greg Fitzpatrick at offensive tackle. Running back Dallas Hayden. Uh, safety slash corner slash defensive back slash all around pass protector. Kai Stokes, uh, Bennett Christian at tight end, wide receivers. Kai, we already got four of them because Brian Hartline don't mess around. Caleb Burton, Caleb Brown, 
Kojo and Twee, and Kion Grace. And Kyle, I want to state for the record, mm-hmm. and I'm putting myself out there on this one. All right. I pronounced all of this correctly. Come at me. All right. Come at me. I pronounced all, all right. of those right. So we've got 14 here. Currently, Ohio State has the second highest recruiting average in the class. Uh, currently ranked seventh behind. So current update here in the early recruiting cycle. Top 10, Texas A&M, LSU, Oklahoma, Ohio State at seven. Then Oregon, Notre Dame, Texas, Georgia, Penn State at two. And then Alabama. Alabama, or excuse me, Penn State having a really good class early on, but they they already have 26 <laughs> recruits yeah. right now. So it's going to, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to catch yeah. up to Adam because yeah. of the 26, of the 26 commitments, Jared, 12, yeah. 12 are three stars. Yeah. Which by the way, isn't, isn't bad. And recruiting yeah. rankings yeah. and recruiting stars are not end all be all and all of that. It should be noted that Ohio state with an entire wide receiver room filled with five and four star wide receivers is currently being led by three star chris olave so just just for the record recruiting stars and recruiting rankings are incredibly important but they're not end all be all this is true so by the way nomad gave me a b minus for my pronunciations Uh uh-uh you you tell me specifically where i went wrong with the pronunciation of the 14 members of the current class no get get out of here with your c plus Get out of here. All right. All right. Getting off topic here, Jared. So we have 14, <laughs> 14 currently, currently committed to Ohio State. So let's say Ohio State gets 24. Let's say they get yeah. 24 for this class. Give me 10. Give me 10 names here. You project that Ohio State will get what? this year. You want me to have all the fun? I, what, why don't, let's, let's go back and forth. Let's go back and forth. I, I think right. as, as of recording, as of recording, uh, there's been a lot of movement for Kenyatta Jackson. Um, he's defensive end. Uh, I think, in my opinion, I think, in my opinion, uh, he is Ohio State bound. And that's not really just my opinion. Uh, there, there are a lot of crystal balls coming his way in recent days. A lot. I've, I've, I've had him in the mock for several months in a row now. Uh, but my confidence, my confidence in Kenyatta Jackson has gone up a lot. Uh, I th- and not only my confidence, but I think the urgency of it, meaning that I think it happened is probably he's probably the next commitment to Ohio State. Um, like I said, I've, I've had him penciled into the class for a while now, but the, the confidence and the timing have both gone up a lot in just the past few days. Mm-hmm. OK, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, next one you have on here, and you have him as a 10 out of 10. Like, this is pretty much a sure thing that yeah. he's coming to Ohio State. Early. That is correct. Okay. So the next one here, you have a rating of a 9 out of 10. So pretty, very confident here. Uh, you have Caden Curry here, the yeah. uh, defensive lineman from uh, Greenwood, Indiana. Uh, not much, Not much news from him, which... Probably is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, very quiet only, recruitment. Very quiet. Only only one prediction uh, so far here. Going to Ohio State. And it, yeah, it's just here, here's a guy just I don't know. What what makes you so comfortable here, Jared, having him a, as a nine? I it's just it's been again, it's been been a very quiet recruitment, but it's just the story with him has always seemed to be, at least per reports and per how people within the WAC feel. It's always just sort of been like, he's going to take his time. He's going to take his visits. He's not going to be a guy who commits early and then takes a bunch of visits. Once he's done, he's done. So he's going to take mm-hmm. his time with it. But there's always just been a very quiet confidence in regards to to Caden Curry, and that just hasn't wavered for months. 
a lot of the times the you know recruitments feel like roller coasters and this just hasn't felt like that it just felt like a very steady ohio state waiting their turn yep next next name here uh we we've mentioned a number of times especially in the off season this year zion branch uh here's the safety out of bishop gorman one of the top recruits in the country uh per the comp- 24/7 composite 50th best in the country, fourth best safety. And yeah, most of the votes going, most of the crystal ball is going to Ohio State. But there, there's just been some mix recently here when you look at that crystal ball. So the past, again, hasn't nothing new in the past few months here, but kind of a mix between USC and Ohio State still. So yeah. you have you have you have Zion as an eight here, even even with all the mix between with USC as well, you still have him ranked pretty high. By the way, uh Stuart, just reading Stuart's uh comments down in our live chat. Uh we will be getting to McClellan. He's in he's in the mock. Um, to say that he's a silent commit, I'm not quite that confident. We'll get there. Um, are you giving that seven slash eight to Zion? Is is that what that was? Okay. Oh, he was a silent commitment. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I, I, we're 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 on the same page now. Yeah. Uh, no, I I agree. I currently have him as an eight. Um, USC, I always felt like was the the leader in the clubhouse here or excuse me, not the leader in the clubhouse. Ohio State's been the leader in the clubhouse. USC has been the primary opposition. The problem here, if you're USC, is that you don't have a head coach. Now, the good news is, is that your your head coach, which quite frankly was a lame duck and everyone knew it, is out of the picture. So that's that's partially good news, right? But also, like, who the hell's the head coach? Who the hell is it? And yeah, yeah, Stuart, it might be it might be Jimmy Franks. It really could be. No, it won't be Urban Meyer, I promise. Um, But yeah, I really like Zion Branch here. I I think Ohio State is the unquestioned leader in this recruitment right now. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, I. I think when it's all said and done, I, I believe as of right now, Zion would come to Ohio State. But early on here, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it how it comes in our next um, um, mock class here. So next one here, this is an interesting one. Uh, he been the, been on a lot of recruiting news recently, especially with yeah. his recent visit last weekend. Uh, X, Xavier Wankpa. And Wonkpa. And Wonkpa. Yeah. That was close. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's a kid out of Iowa. So Thank going you, Mike to that, uh, going going to the Iowa game, um, seemed to really enjoy it. And two insiders, granted, Iowa insiders. Iowa insiders. Give it, giving moderate confidence after uh after or even during that game no it was after after that game going towards towards iowa yeah and like and then like even like you know you had will fong even write the classic recruiting story of so and so had a great time on their visit and like, no, 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 no disrespect to the people who have to put these stories out, because a lot of times those stories are really just an excuse to have an interview with the kid. Right. Because that then it's the uh, it's what you're talking about when you're off the record that really matters. Um, and, and so you have to write the so and so had a really good time and you get a couple quotes for your story. But you'll you'll notice that Will Fong didn't change his crystal ball vote, despite the fact that he wrote that story. Uh, Will Fong still has the crystal ball going to uh, to uh, Ohio State. Um, a lot of the guys over at the scoop, they're still solid on on their confident and their their confidence and therefore um, the confidence within the whack that he he's coming to Ohio state. I will say this. Iowa probably went from a 
uh, you know, he, he he's from Iowa, so he, they get kind of a courtesy look. And I, and I think it's probably gone beyond courtesy look. That being said, it's still like Ohio State one, Notre Dame two. And I was a serious three when they were a gifted three before. Uh, mm-hmm. Personal confidence level. I saw someone ask. I have him at a seven. I still think he's the leader. He's not the solid leader. That's what seven means. Seven means that Ohio State's the favorite. That That's what yeah, it means. I, it doesn't mean that he's a strong favorite. It just means he's the favorite. Yeah, I agree with Stuart. I, th- I think a little bit lower here, maybe about a five for me. Uh, it's it just something about him him with the multiple visits to Iowa here. It just... I don't know. It's just, it's just a bad but he's feeling from for there. me here. I, I understand. I understand. But you go you go somewhere multiple times, you tend to like it a little bit more each time you go. Yes, Stuart. He's been there three times, but he's also actually from there. That's the thing. Like, it's down the street. Mm-hmm. So he's right. coming to he's coming to Columbus October 30th. On his own dime. On his own dime. Coming to Columbus October 30th on his own dime. No, mm-hmm. not clout chasing on his. You don't you don't clout chase on your own money. All right. No. All right we got We got to move on here. So next up, we got hero. We got hero from California. The defensive lineman. One of the best defensive linemen for this class here. Exactly. Gangland. Uh, uh, Hiro Kanu, uh, to be more pro- more precise here. Here's another guy here, very quiet, no crystal balls yet for him, but yet you have him pretty high here as well as a seven. Yeah, uh, I think Ohio State leads. Uh, by by the way, like my numbers, I, I want to let's this this should be said. My numbers correlate to to real things. So number so if they have a ten. That means we're just waiting. That means it's a done deal and we're just waiting for an announcement. I have one player to 10. We've already covered that. Nine means I'm certain. Eight means Ohio State is heavily favored. A seven means that Ohio State is simply favored. Six means that Ohio State is among the favorites. So they're probably tied for first place. Five means that Ohio State's in good position, but not first or even tied for first place. Um, and then it just keeps like four just means that Ohio State's like in consideration. Like it, and it keeps going down from there. Uh, Hero, I have at a seven. I think he leads and I'm not even I think Ohio State leads, but I, I don't feel confident saying that Ohio State is in a solid lead simply because the recruitment's been so quiet. And I just don't know that. So I would say Ohio State is among the leaders, although par- part of me believes, honestly, that he, that Ohio State is the leader by a lot. But I'm mm-hmm. just going to go with is the leader because I again, it's been a really quiet recruitment and I just don't know that. Yep. Got it. All right. Let's do but a thank you for more putting here. that in the uh, chat there, Kyle. Yeah. All right. Let's put a couple more in here. Uh, let's see. Inside lineman, so center, Ernest Green. Or guard, or guard, or guard. Interior or guard. lineman, that's all that means. Okay. Um, kid out of California here. Uh, only one crystal ball vote going to Georgia. Uh, who who put that in? That is a good question. Uh, it, it, it is Greg Biggins. So yeah, it's a good... It's... Re- reason, yeah, reasonable here. So even even with him... Uh, recently, even predicting him to go go to Georgia, you have him as a seven still, Jared. I what, do. What, 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 what's what's got what's in your mind about him? Um, we're talking about Saint Bo- Saint Bosco Bellflower. That's a high school that Ohio State has recent uh, offensive line success with. Um, it's a seven. Maybe it should be a six. It's, it's kind of a low seven, like. I don't know if I don't think Kyle has said this. We're reading these in order of confidence. So the further down this list we go, the less confident we are. So I I do ask you to note that even though he is of the same score as Canoe 
and in Wankba that he is still lower on the list. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out there. Um, I, I think Ka- Kanu, uh, I, I, in my pronunciation, well, his name is spelled K-A-N-U. Ka, probably if you want to like do it phonetically, it'd be like K-A-H dash N-U. There. Um, I'm giving pronunciation lessons. What 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 podcast is this? <laughs> um, yeah. So a seven, but it's kind of a low seven. It's kind of a low seven. All right. Well, I'm going to guess this is also a low seven here as well. Yeah. Uh, defensive end Amari Abor. A, a it's long A. Abor. Uh, it's a long A. Okay, Amari Abor. <laughs> kid out of kid out of um, Duncanville, Texas. Here. One of the best here, top 20, second best edge um, pass rusher here in the mix here. It's looking like Oklahoma and Ohio State early on here. Looking at the looking at the crystal balls here. Not much changed um, in the past couple of months here. So seven here, low conf or high confidence here, but low in thinking Ohio State that we'll end up at Ohio state here. So what you got with, uh, with, uh, Amari. Um, I think, I think Oklahoma's lost some steam here. Um, I think Ohio state's actually in pretty good position. Um, looking at this, I kind of wish I, I kind of wish I had him and green probably swapped. If we're going, if the further we go down, the further we go down on confidence. If I, if I gave this a second thought, I should probably have those two guys swapped. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to go, I like Ohio state, Ohio state's chances here, especially since I think Ohio state's fading on an eye white a little bit. So if we're looking at defensive ends, I think we're looking at Kenyatta Jackson, who I think is that's a matter of time. And then we're looking at Amari Abor. Um, and then you have Caden Curry, who's kind of a part defensive pack tackled the part defensive end you have Gabe Powers who's part linebacker part defensive end so if we're if we're adding like two like true defensive ends to this class I'm thinking it's Kenyatta Jackson and Amari Abor okay fair enough all right I think this is a good point here Jared to um do an ad break here so why don't you start us off with uh some iron bean coffee iron bean coffee Kyle did you know The Iron Bean Coffee is a veteran-owned Ohio-based company that only roasts your beans after you order them. Of course you did. I did. Yeah, you're you're a listener of this podcast, just like everyone else. So, of course, you know that. Uh, So, let's talk about a specific coffee. Um, Let's talk about... Let's go with our uh, Nordic Trio. How about that? So, you have the Loki, which I have to say is one of my favorite light roast ever. It's it's a medium light. So, as far as lights go, it's kind of like how... As far as seven goes, it's a it's a good seven. Well, as far as lights go, this is a pretty dark light. Um, it's a wet process blend that's higher in caffeine than you might expect from a light roast. Uh, it has citrus and floral notes. Uh, th- then you have his older brother. You have the Thor, which is not quite a medium, but not quite a dark. It's somewhere in between. Um, it's I think, Kyle, if you have to ask me, what does it taste like? I would have to say thunder and lightning. What does that mean? I don't know, but that's what it tastes like. It tastes like thunder and lightning. Why? Because it's Thor. That's why. And then don't forget about dad. Don't forget about dad. You have the Odin. Odin is a dark roast. We're we're not messing with like some medium darks or whatever. No, this is a dark roast. This is this is the dad of the three. This is a dark. Put some hair on your chest roast coffee. This is the Odin. Uh, This coffee, this coffee will keep you fighting long after you should have gone to Valhalla. Uh, these coffees and so many more coffees available over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, Mad Canadian, as mentioned earlier, will be at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria in Cary, Ohio, this Thursday from 4 to 7. So come hungry, come get some dinner at the Mad Canadian food truck in Cary, Ohio, at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria. If you can't make it there, then throw away your Sunday plans and go up to the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery off of Tiffin Avenue 
between 11 and 6 p.m. to get some of that sweet, sweet, good old Mad Canadian barbecue. If you want any more information about him and his food truck and where he's heading to next, check out his social media, Twitter, Facebook, to find more information out. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company for the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. There's a lot uh, of shenanigans going in there, Jared. There's too much shenanigans in the live chat. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's move it on here. Cam Dewberry. Yeah. Cam, Cam. Dewberry, uh, one, of, um, one of the top offensive tackles in this recruiting class out of could Humble. Be could be a guard. Out of, Humble guard. Te- out of Humble, Texas here. Yes, sir. Ohio uh, State has had recent success getting their pick of the litter out of the state of Texas here. Is Cam is Cam Dewberry going to be that next one? Yeah, uh, I think Ohio State again. This is this is a six. So I think Ohio State's among among the favorite teams here. Um, I'm not saying that they're number one. Uh, I am saying that I, I think Ohio State has a decent shot here. Um, and and I think as far as you know, if we're we're talking about a mock class here, which is exactly what we're doing. Um, I think that we have to reach a little bit more with the offensive linemen than we are with the other. So I, I think some of the lower scores you're going to see on this list are offensive linemen because Ohio State needs offensive linemen. And that's one of the groups in which they don't, from a recruiting standpoint, always get their pick of the litter. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next up here, we have a defensive lineman here. I believe uh, someone in our chat mentioned, mentioned him here. Stewart. Stewart. Chris McClellan. McKellen, I do believe. McKellen? McClellan? McClellan, gonna... yes. McClellan. Okay, there you go. Uh, here's a kid, top 100 recruit. Uh, here's another defensive lineman, but man. Yeah, I think Stewart's right. Maybe it's Mick not coming, maybe. <laughs> uh, I, you know, there, there was a point in time in which I had him very highly ranked as far as my confidence score. And he's he's uh, crept his way down to a six. So, you know, we're 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 sliding here a little bit, but I'm still. I'm, I'm still having him as a six. I still have him as a six. That's still a very solid score. Um. That's still me saying he is among the favorites. Ohio State went from, I think, the favorite to one of the favorites. And I I don't think that just because you have some negative momentum doesn't mean that that negative momentum is going to keep sliding. Ohio State had a lot of negative momentum at one point with Amari Abor. I gave up on Amari Abor at one point, and now Ohio State's back into those good graces. There are players currently in this class who are currently committed who I had as Locke Shore was going to flip away from Ohio State at one point. And you know what? They didn't. So you know, based, things based change. On, these are these are fickle children. Based on your ratings here, I'd probably give them a five and not a six. Ohio State's in good position, but trails another team. And who would you say that other team is? I'd say it's Oklahoma right now. Okay. I would say it's Oklahoma. <laughs> I'd say it's Oklahoma. This is why I never trust Jared. <laughs> you know what? Don't trust me. It's fine. Don't 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 trust me. It's fine. All right, all right. Last one here. We have uh, Emil Wagner. The yeah. uh, here's the kid out of Wayne High School um, over at Dayton. A kid, a kid, I think Ohio State really needs to go after here. Yeah, but oh, man, it, it's sliding and sliding more. Uh, going to going down to Kentucky here. Yeah, well, I, there's I, I, Kentucky I, I, and there's Notre Dame. Um, it's Ohio State once again, as I said, doesn't always get their pick of a litter offensively, uh, offensive line. Lee, um, I Ohio State's doing their damnedest to get back in on Kenyatta. Good one. Um, and that was I had that as like a one at one point and Kenyatta good ones, maybe up to like a three or a four now. Um, so they're trying, um, but a three or a four does not. Yeah, I know, Stuart. Um, it, 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 I, a four, a four still means less likely than likely. 
let's be very I, clear. A four still means less likely than likely. I, this isn't I, me I, putting a crystal ball vote in and then scoring it a four. Like four means less likely than likely. I'll keep saying it. Sometimes uh, that's an advertising thing. You have to say something three times, but it's not being, zero. It's not one. You're, you're being too kind, Jared. It, it's not, not a four. It's not a four. It's, it's more like a two. Uh, it is it's, not. It's on life. It's on life support right now. It's on life support. I disagree. I, I, all right. All right. Well, we will agree to disagree with that here. So. But a four is not a good score. I, I really feel like you need to understand that a four is not a good score. I have four. The translation for four is Ohio State is in consideration. Five is good position. So they aren't in good position is what f four means. Five is in good position. Four mm -hmm. is below that. They aren't in good position right now. I, right, so I that, need to be very clear. Four is not a good I, score. I, I hear you. I hear you. But it's too high still, in my opinion. <laughs> All right. So, that, so that's our 10 projected here. Uh, Kenyatta Jackson, Kane Curry, Zion Branch, Xavier Nwankpa. N on on Wonkpa. And Wonkpa, thank you. Uh Buckeye Zach gives me an A. Thank you. Uh Hero, Hero, <laughs> uh, Ernest, Amari, Cam, Chris, and Emil. Yeah. Yeah, and like Emil is kind of a placeholder for they they need an offensive lineman, but I don't know who that offensive lineman is. Um, because like I said, Emil is less likely than likely at this point. I all right, let, let's get let's get to some ask Slipcast questions here, Jared. OK. All right. Um, Nomad has a cluster of questions here. What recruiting position is your biggest concern? Offensive line. Yep, uh, specifically, offensive line. specifically offensive tackle. Um, Coach Stud is not a great recruiter compared to the other members of the coaching staff. He's not. That being said, he's a very good developer of talent. So he is very good at taking guys who aren't the highest ranked and turning them into very solid offensive linemen. So you kind of have to, you know, because we've had guys in the past, uh, most notably at quarterback coach and wide receiver coach, who were very good at recruiting players, but not always the best at developing them. And you can't always get both. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Will we go hard after a quarterback for the 22 class with no. the eventual loss of two quarterbacks this season? No, uh, the, the, you're not getting a quarterback in the 22 class. That's not no. happening. Um, they reached out to Drew. Um, I, this one, I don't know how to pronounce Stuart. Um, I think it's I think it's a lar. I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, I currently have him scored as a one. He's been <laughs> no end died. Um, I currently have him ranked as a one. Uh, if that tells you anything, uh, he's been committed to Penn State for a long time. I really like him. I think he's a very solid quarterback. I think he's just been committed to Penn State for a real long time, and I don't think he's uh or nor should he be super eager to come and sit on the bench behind yours and McCord and some of the other guys currently on the team. All right. All right. Next up here, Jared, what is the highest spot in the CFP that Ohio State can reasonably get to this year? One, two, they no, I mean, what they can reasonably get to it's October. It's this mid October. Do you realize they, I'm not saying that they will get to number one. That's not the question. The question is, can with enough chaos, they absolutely can get to number one. Do I see? <laughs> UK, uh, unless you can cheer for Kentucky all you want. They're not touching Georgia this week. Tune into the Friday episode. Um, so reasonably, I think they can get to one. Um, does that make it likely? Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> it's less likely than likely. Yeah. It's a three. 
but it's possible. Go along, to kind of go along with that. Does a two loss Bama make the CFP? No, no, not, not this year from what we're seeing right now. Let's just say you have a one loss Oregon team. You have an undefeated Cincinnati team. We have a Georgia team who wins the conference. You have an Ohio state or an Iowa or a Penn state, a big 10 team with one law with at least with one or no losses they're getting in. That's going to leave Alabama out. I agree. And let's not, let's not forget Oregon. Oregon's still in there with one loss as well. Don't, don't sleep on Oregon still. Especially if they win their conference. Mm -hmm. And and Oklahoma. I know we've been giving shit about Oklahoma. They (laughs) are still undefeated. And it looks like they're going to start starting the correct quarterback, which could completely yep. turn the fortunes of Oklahoma around. Um, they might have gotten away with starting the wrong quarterback to this point. Yeah, there was there's reports there about it's kind of um, a- William Williams getting the first team reps, and then all of a, and so all of a sudden, once that came through, now all of a sudden, the media availability has been canceled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a student, a student newspaper, a student reporter at Oklahoma uh, got a pair of binoculars and was spying on practice and reported uh, who the who was getting the first team reps. And it wasn't Rattler. And then, boom, media blackout. They canceled the press conference and everything. Yep. Uh, does Cincinnati stand a shot against Georgia or Ohio State in the no. CFP? No, no. Nope. Yep. Moving on. Arizona State Oregon winner make the CFP. The I'm sorry, say that again. Arizona State Oregon winner make the college football playoffs. I have a real hard time saying it. I have a real, real, real hard. Arizona, and by the way, when I say I have a real hard time seeing it. That's me saying Oklahoma State or excuse me, Oregon State, zero chance in hell. Arizona State. <laughs> Two percent in hell. <laughs> yeah, does a one loss Notre Dame have any shot at at a spot at this point? No, Notre Dame needs a lot of chaos to get in. They need a lot of chaos. Do they have a shot? Yes. Is it a realistic or reasonable shot? No. If Iowa, if Iowa makes the playoff, will they embarrass the Big Ten just like last time? Iowa hasn't been in it. I, I think probably means like like Sparty. I, I, that's that's what I assume that they meant. Yes. Yeah. Does does Jimmy Harbs currently have any hot dogs in his pockets? Yes, at all times. If he has pockets, there are hot dogs in them. All right. All right. And how? Oh, we already gave our confidence scale of um of uh, Xavier already to answer Buckeye Zach. He wanted to know on a scale of one to ten that Xavier will come to Columbus. Yep, we answered that. We have a, and we have a seven. Well, actually, here. it's like a 10 out of 10 that he's coming. Well, I'll say like a 9.5 out of 10 that he's coming to Columbus because he's coming to Columbus on on October 30th, the mm-hmm. weekend of October 30th. Now, that might be me being a smart ass. <laughs> Playing college football in Columbus. We already answered that one. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think that's all the questions, unless there's any more in the chat recently here. Uh, why does Jared think he's an expert in pronunciations now? Because I've been trying. <laughs> um, why are you reading all of my college football questions during the Thursday episode? Because this is when we're doing the college football playoff questions. This is, this is when we were doing this. <laughs> we're doing sloop picks on Friday. All right. That's all the questions we have here, Jared. And man, right on time for a change. I, that's a lie and you know it. <laughs> all right, Jared. Let's go ahead and um, kick us off here. All right. Uh, I want to encourage everyone to visit our uh, Discord server at discord.thesloopcast.com. If you've never used the Discord server before, it's a it's an organized chat. Uh, it's kind of uh, halfway in between social media and a message board. And I know I said half, but I'm going to throw a third one in there anyway, a chat room. Um, 
but it's 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 basically a chat room, but not for kids from the nineties. It's it's a modern it's a modern chat room. Um, it's heavily moderated. It's considerably. I mean, like by a factor of 10, less toxic than regular social media, because Kyle and I keep it that way, along with our our, our, our friends, Gangland and Nomad and and Stuart and our other moderators who show up in red down in our in our discord chat down there. Um, <laughs> chat room with 10,000 percent less racism and homophobia. That's that's an accurate description of our discord server. Um, that is for sure. Uh, so yeah, uh, come visit us at, uh, at discord.sloopcast.com. It's an app you can visit on your phone. It's an app you can install on your computer. It's a web page you can go to on your computer. It's, uh, don't be intimidated by it. It's, it's, it's not, it's not super intimidating. I promise. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Anything in Kyle's corner? Oh, I didn't put oh. this down, but, but, uh, basketball news. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, I'm pulling it up real quick here. Sorry. It's in the Discord server. It's in the Discord server. <laughs> yeah, somewhere I can't find it though. But... It's in the basketball <laughs> channel. Do we actually put it in the basketball channel? Where else would you have put it? This is why we um, have different channels in the Discord server. <laughs> I. I don't think I did. Did I? How? Yeah. Yeah. Um. How I how would you not? How would you not? Where 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 did you put it then? Ohio State has captains. <laughs> Ohio State basketball <laughs> has captains is what Kyle is attempting to find and failing, quite frankly, gloriously uh, in I his am. efforts. I am. Here we go. Here we go. Justin Aarons, EJ Liddell, Justin Suing, and Kyle Young. Not a surprise in there. Um, I am a little bit by Aaron's a little bit, but the other three, I definitely can see you got Kyle Young, a, a eight year senior, and then you have a uh, Justin suing and EJ Liddell. Yeah, I get, yeah, I could see Aaron's. I was just maybe a little are surprised, say- but are you saying that there should only be three captains or are you saying that a different force person deserved the fourth spot? Um, no, I would, I wouldn't say a, a a different person would deserved it. Um, I, I mean, if you're going, if, yeah, I mean, if you're going to do four, then yeah, I get. I guess you put Justin Aaron's there. You have a you have a senior there. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Kyle. Uh, anything else in Kyle's corner? That's it for today, Jared. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music will be by Columbus based hip hop group. Uh, I, 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 you know, I, I, I've been talking up my, my pronunciation skills. Um, but then I'm, I'm going to say, I'm not a hundred percent sure if this is supposed to be pronounced my star Anderson or Mr. Anderson. It's cause it is spelled with an A that's M I S T A R space Anderson. Uh, but the name of this song is alley talk and uh stay tuned and give it a listen if you're listening on your podcast app youtube people if you want to listen to the song the link's down in the description you can listen to it there and with all of that being said i'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer listen to local music and of course support your local podcasters once again this is mr anderson 